For me growing up, my dream and my goal was always to play college basketball at the highest level. And growing up in Minnesota, growing up in the Midwest, I really enjoyed Big Ten basketball. And Wisconsin was always kind of that premier program that I had circled growing up of where I'd really love to play. I've said from the very beginning, it's going to be a sad day when I don't get to coach Brad anymore. He's been a leader since the day he walked in. Very few guys have the wherewithal to be able to do that and have that voice in the locker room and secondly, have the respect of the rest of your teammates. But there was no doubt who our future leader was going to be uh, very early in his freshman year. I came to Wisconsin trying to chase Big Ten championships. His freshman year, that was a very trying year because he's doing it with the shoulder that kept separating on him. I think Davison, by the way, his shoulder. had his shoulder pop out. My freshman year, we were hit with all sorts of trials and tribulations with injuries and whatnot. And Brad Davidson is having a fabulous freshman year, has the ball at the point for Wisconsin. And we were on the outside looking in of the NCAA tournament. Hap back to Davison with two. Contested three is an air ball. That's it. And the Spartans do a great job of guarding the arc, and they win it by three. That's that heavy, and it put a bad taste in our mouth. After all the sad locker rooms and the locker room we've been in today, uh, it should add fuel to the fire for next year. As much as it hurts right now, uh, we're going to be ready to go next year. That's the third charge drawn by Davison tonight. You know, he took a lot of charges as a freshman and as a sophomore, partly because he couldn't move his left arm. He's drawn five charges in one game. There's going to be collisions. He just plays the game with a passion. He plays the game hard. He plays the game physical. He's how you want your, your team to play. Just, you know, it's all in every day. Look at the diving freshman on the floor again. Davidson doesn't care, does he? I hate him. You know, no, I don't hate him at all. In fact, I appreciate him. Looking for Davison, and a foul is called. And maybe Davison got away with the little hook. The perception of being a dirty player, this and that. I mean, he is a hard-nosed kid. He's on the border sometimes, but, but uh, I'd sure love to have him. We're getting a hook and hold of flagrant against Wisconsin. You know, the area that I really want to address is the mockery that has now been made of the hook and hold or any type of thing. And it, it appears to be, have become a Brad Davison rule where it's become, quite frankly, a joke. It had crossed the line from um, commenting on him as a player to comments about him as a person. And, you know, I just felt he had had a spotlight on him um, intentionally in some regards that I didn't think was fair um, in, in a large part. Um, highlighting how he plays because he plays hard. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. The support that we got from it and understanding that I wasn't going to take any more and I was going to stand up for one of my players that I felt was being unfairly treated. I talked to Greg about it, and uh, and I, I can see public's opinion. I mean, sometimes I probably feel that way myself, but most of the time it's out of jealousy <laughs> because I say, wow, you know, this kid leaves it all on the floor. He's doing everything he can do to win. And sometimes it looks maybe too aggressive. In my years here, back to Mateen Cleaves and them, I had guys that were too aggressive. Love those guys, absolutely love them. This is my fifth year here at the University of Wisconsin. It may seem like I've been here longer. Um, that's just I've been fortunate to play a lot of minutes and playing a lot of big games. I know he gets all the jokes and everything, but he's really only 22, and uh, and it's only his fifth year. So he he may try to apply for a six. I don't know. He's talked about it. We could find a way. <laughs> I never had the dream or the goal of playing professional basketball. Playing at Wisconsin in college basketball was kind of my peak.
Last year was a tough year, all things considered, with COVID. So when we had the decision to make on if we wanted to take the extra eligibility to come back and do it one more time, it was a pretty easy decision for me because the way I looked at it is I had one more opportunity to live out my dream. You know, as a coach, when you have somebody that embraces and embodies the love of being a college student athlete and you know they're going to give you everything they got every single day, you welcome those guys back with open arms. The wins and losses are great, the records, the points. People will enjoy those, but the things that I will really remember and cherish, the memories I've made off the court and the relationships I've developed. But the best win of my life was getting Tyra Marie Bus to say yes to spending the rest of her life with me. My fiance's name is Tyra Bus. She actually played basketball here in the Big Ten of Indiana. So she's a Hoosier. She had a great career at Indiana, and now has started her college coaching career. The first opportunity I had to introduce Tyra to my parents, we got her outside of her comfort zone a little bit. We brought her fishing here on Lake Mendota in Madison. My parents got to ask her questions, she got to ask them questions, all while, you know, she had to earn brownie points to see if she could catch fish or not, because you got to be able to catch fish to be a part of the family. Davidson family, quality time is very important. Living the dream. One way that we love to spend that quality time is fishing. Come on, Sonny. Come on, Sonny. Let's go catch some walleyes, all right? It's one of my favorite things to do, you know, outside of playing basketballs. I love, I love to go fishing with my family. You're on the boys' team. Girls versus guys. Well, we're not netting their fish, then. Are you sure? Got to pull it in. Everything we do is a competition, a friendly competition. We got the center back. Good to go. Come on, let's find one. Let's find one. It's the biggest fish. It's the most fish. It's the type of fish. It's the quantity of fish. Mom's got one. Mom's got one. Picture. Fishing foul. Cut. Cut. One more time. Watch your dig. Last summer was the first time that my parents got to meet my now fiance Tyra. So he meets Tyra and we come here in September to fish with these two and he was the last one to catch a fish, caught the fewest fish, he was distracted the whole time. They were standing both back there that way and his eyes weren't that way, his eyes were hey, that way. But the whole I time. still won the day because look where <laughs> we are now. <laughs> she put her arm around him and said, <laughs> That's okay, hon. You do all the little things that don't show up in the stat sheet. <laughs> and at that point, Jim and I knew she was a cute. <laughs> you know, the world tries to paint a certain picture of you or maybe tries to write a reputation that you don't necessarily want to always thrive in. You know, I think that's one thing that I've heard a lot over my career is that perception becomes reality. It's tough because, you know, when you have a perception, it's real to them, but it's also personal to them. At the end of the day, even though it's real to them, it's not the truth. They don't know who I am. Um, and uh, I hope one day I get the chance to meet all of them, everyone that said a negative thing about me, because I, I would love to have those conversations and actually get to know them. Um, but at the end of the day, just because it's written, just because it's said by someone doesn't make it real. You know, there's a difference between reality and the truth.